Hey guys, this video is for you to help understand the pros and cons of Figma in comparison to Sketch and Adobe XD. And not only through listing them, but also by giving you a clear idea of how and why they matter to you. At the end of this video, I'll promise you that you'll have clarity with how Figma differentiates from others and whether it's the right tool for you. Figma in one word. Figma came out back in 2012, but today it's probably the most trending prototype tool. In one word, Figma to me is a team player tool that really helps you designers to work smoothly with your team and also any stakeholders. Figma helps you throughout the whole journey of your project and you can do almost all of that work just within the same platform. So how exactly is Figma collaborative? Let's start with the pros. I have four key pros that truly adds value to designers in their everyday work. Here are the list. Better collaboration with your team, better collaboration with the stakeholders, frames, and auto layout. Let's start with the first pro, better collaboration with your team. One of Figma's strengths is the ability to seamlessly collaborate with your designer peers. As a designer working on a project, I would make backups of the progress I made, and I may create multiple versions and perhaps copy paste each other's updates. But if I'm out sick, my peers may easily grab the wrong files to continue working. Even worse, even if I made sure to direct to the correct file, we will separately make updates and deviate from where we started. What's the best way to reflect each other's updates from here? I don't know, exactly. There wasn't just the right way for us to seamlessly keep ourselves updated with the right design file. Working on the same design file with your peers took extra caution and manual labors to stay aligned. Figma solved this problem elegantly in these two ways. First, it's a cloud app, so it runs on your browser and all files live on the cloud. You can open or share them using URL links, just like how we do with Google Drive. Dropbox. URL is obviously the most mainstream way of sharing digital content, so I love the ease of this. This allows team members to reference the same URL and keep track of the same file wherever and whenever. Do I still need to make duplicates for versions? If you have a free plan, then unfortunately, as of today, yes. You may do so if you can afford to use your three project limit. However, if you're on a paid plan, you will get access to their version control features that lets you restore history up to 30 days. So the team and you can always reference the project file in its update just from the URL. Secondly, Figma Editor allows co-edit. You and your peers can simultaneously work on the same design file remotely. It's again like Google Doc, but now it's on your design tool. With this ability, you don't have to merge your changes with your team, but you simply manage the design file together. Figma as a cloud app allows the team to manage and edit the same design files together. What about other apps? While Adobe XD now supports cloud documents and co-editing, Sketch does not yet support though, but there is a plan to support in the near future. The second pro is better collaboration with stakeholders. The mainstream way of sharing prototypes and design to project stakeholders are probably using Envision. Envision allows design presentations to be shared as URL and comments can be posted in line to start a discussion. While Envision is an amazing service, designers needed to upload and manage slides on Envision separately. In Figma, the preview and commenting is inherently supported. The preview or the play button at the top generates a separate URL which becomes the shareable link. And here you can comment to start a discussion without uploading any slides. It's all one-to-one -one with your design files. In addition to this, Figma also brought the same inline commenting feature to their editor. Again, it's a similar feature seen in apps like Google Docs but it just makes so much sense for prototype editors to have this capability. Figma allows inline comments and discussions with peers and any stakeholders all in a single platform. So how exactly is Figma's editor so great? We talked a lot about collaboration, but Figma's usability also shines hard in its editor UI. Here, I want to highlight the two features of Figma that differentiates itself from other prototyping apps. The third pro, frame, not artboard. Figma uses frames instead of artboards. Now, artboard is something you're familiar in apps like 
like Sketch Adobe XD. But what's cool about Frame is that it's a lot like a real UI in its structure. Artboard is basically your canvas or the viewport. It's regarded as a different element from the actual UI elements. And the artboard is a single flat layer panel. Frame, on the other hand, is just like a div element or a container. It can be nested and it doesn't distinguish the canvas or the viewport from the UI elements. Any frame at the very parent level is immediately regarded as the viewport. The reason frame is an advantage is because with frame, designer no longer need to group elements into a folder or nest them. The moment an element goes inside a frame, the element is immediately a part of that parent frame without grouping into folders. Imagine frames are like building blocks. You can lay them next to each other or you can stack one on top of another. When you grab and move the bottom block, then any blocks stacked on top will move together. If it's easier, you can also think of it as a nestable container instead of blocks. When you grab a parent frame, everything inside will be regarded as parts. Frames are useful because in UI architecture, most components are a group of elements. So by putting the relevant elements together into a frame, it can self-contain the inner constraints within the frame. So when you work on layouts or spacing, you can arrange how to separate components and isolate the concerns between them. Frames are just like containers that can nest frames or elements within. This helps us manage layouts and spacing by the container. What about other apps? Well, actually, neither Sketch nor Adobe XD supports frame. All right, let's talk about the last pro, auto layout. Even in the happiest path, designers cannot avoid the great amount of time spent on fixing of paddings and margins. Sketch wasn't so good at keeping spacing consistent. Anima tool plugin for Sketch was great at first, but turned out to be quite buggy and unintuitive. Figma's auto layout helps you create dynamic relationships between frames or elements. This means when the content size changes, the spacing will adjust itself accordingly. By nesting auto layout relationships and locking up the spacing rules between frames and elements, you can let the rules handle the spacing and you now have your full time to invest in the contents. Auto layout takes care of the spacing and lets you worry about the content. What about other apps? Well, Adobe XD has an equivalent feature called Smart Layout. Sketch does not natively support, but only has a simple alignment feature called Tidy. Now let's talk about the cons. I have four key cons that may block you from achieving the best result if you're one of those very detailed designers. Keep in mind that while I say cons, I don't necessarily mean them as weaknesses, but rather take them as points that Figma can improve on to perfection us designers daily work. Here are the list of cons. Lack of responsiveness, no way to create interactive components, and not true design systems. Let's start with the first con. Lack of responsiveness. While auto layout is no doubt an amazing tool, it locks up your comps and there isn't much room for responsiveness. While you are still able to constrain visual elements by locking both ends like left and right, this won't work if combined with auto layout. This means when contents grow, they overlap instead of pushing contents to respect spacing. To be extra picky, there's no flexbox support nor ability to set maximum or minimum dimensions. So Figma isn't yet optimized to design responsive components. This ultimately means that your viewport size for your comp must generally stay static and you'll have to create a separate comp for different breakpoints. Auto layout overrides your constraint setting. This means components cannot be fully responsive and designers are forced to work to create static comp in a fixed viewport. What about other apps? Both Sketch and Adobe XD utilizes constraints to support similar behaviors, but neither supports breakpoints or pushing contents. The second con is no way to create interactive components. While Figma offers a useful and intuitive prototyping tool inside their editor, the interaction options are only useful to navigate between pages. Even if I create an interactive component by adding interactivity to switch between states, when I place the button on a page, 
the button. Interactivity no longer works. This means the interactivity cannot be nested. At a glance, it's exciting to see cool interaction options like on click or while hover, but disappointing to find out you can't apply them to the component level and make those interactions reusable. The only scalable option to switch states is by manually switching on the canvas just like in Sketch. Interaction can't be embedded within a component. Designers will still have to manually update states. What about other apps? Neither Sketch or Adobe XD supports interactive components. Let's talk about the last con, not so design systems. Figma aggressively markets its ability to help establish design systems as if it's something Sketch and other competitors couldn't do. However, this is a bit of an overstatement. Design system is not a feature, but a methodology. Building an atomic design structure is crucial to building design systems, but this is a methodology and not a feature. Also, modulating components and managing them separately is vital to maintain design systems. But again, this is a practice and not a feature. Figma is a cloud app, and there is definitely ease for teams to quickly access components or update them as needed compared to desktop apps. However, today, many prototype tools like Sketch, Adobe XD now support cloud library. So the quality of your design systems will most likely depend not on the choice of the app, but on how you build and maintain them. Does Figma rely on a single source of truth? Figma really likes to use this word as it enables you to truly rely on a single source of truth, but it's not exactly the single source in the sense true design systems would expect. What do I mean by this? True design systems rely on a single source of truth, and the single source of truth has to be the production code. If the production code isn't hooked to your UI library to design with, then the design isn't referencing the source of truth. Designers may be managing their own source of truth for design, but engineers will be managing their source of truth, which is their codes. This defeats the whole purpose of unity and consistency. Some teams may have found their ways around to resolve this gap, but as far as Figma goes, their source of truth only refers to the design library. So you'd still have to figure your way out to make Make sure the production code is indeed one-to-one -one with your design. Figma's single source of truth only refers to the design assets for designers. Designers and engineers will still have to work together to keep their source consistent. What about other apps? Well, neither Sketch nor Adobe XD supports hooking production code to your design kits. So we talked about many pros and some cons. So let me just summarize it real quick. First, we talked about these three pros. First, Cloud App enables the design team to smoothly co-work and co-design projects. Secondly, share design to any stakeholders with URL and discuss in line by commenting. And number three, Frame mimics the real UI structure and helps isolate concerns of each component. And number four, Auto Layout makes the notorious spacing adjustment work drastically easier and more time-saving. Then we talked about cons. The first con, lack of responsiveness, forces designers to work on a fixed viewport. Second con, components can't preserve interaction definition, so states still have to be manually switched. And number three, to build true design systems, it requires a lot of thinking and working outside of the app. So as a conclusion, the cons I listed are all addressing the nice to have functions, but they are definitely not detrimental to designers productivity. Today Figma overall is definitely an amazing tool with so many features loaded that we all wish to have in the past. And finally, did you know there's another prototyping app that's capable of doing all the things I listed Figma can't? It's called FramerX, check it out. I added the link in the description um, of a video that compares Sketch and FramerX. So if you're used to some prototyping tool, that might give you a good starting point in understanding about FramerX. So today, I hope you guys understood the key features, the key pros and cons of Figma, and hopefully that will help you understand how Figma differentiates from others and whether you wanna use it or not. It's free anyway, so you should probably give it a shot and you might find it to be super useful. So try it out. All right, thanks for watching. and if if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.